Who do you go to when you need inspiration? Maybe they didn't hear I love you enough. Maybe they didn't hear I'm proud of you. Maybe their dad was absent. And this, this hurt and this pain and this trauma they experience from their father, they think they can just bury it and ultimately either forget about it or overcome it. Any pain and hurt and trauma from our past that we don't that we don't allow to be transformed, we will ultimately transfer onto someone else. You've got this wound, and because it hasn't been transformed, you're allowing it to transfer onto your wife, to transfer onto your kids and your coworkers. Your past hurts are hurting others. You gotta knock that nonsense off. Deal with your dad. You need to deal with it. It's time to stop putting it off. What's happening, fam? Welcome to the show. We had a lot of requests the last few weeks talking about friendships, uh, specifically male friendships. How do I how do I find friends? How do I make friends? How do I be the friend I want to be uh, to others? Um, a lot of a lot of interesting talk, and not just not just in evangelical circles, but in the world about, about friendships. I was reading an article uh, this morning about a guy who has invented a friendship necklace, as ridiculous as that sounds. It's, a, it's, a, it's an AI necklace um, that a man can wear, and the necklace basically picks up and records and listens to his conversations throughout the day, and then the necklace will basically respond. Uh, will s- respond and talk to him um, as a friend, offer him encouragement, offer him insight, offer him wisdom, and it's supposed to be a tool that's going to eliminate loneliness, which is just ridiculous. AI can't eliminate loneliness. Um, robots and computers and screens can't eliminate loneliness. As a matter of fact, um, they're largely the reason that we feel so lonely. Uh, one of the one of the best quotes I've heard over the last couple of years came, came from a professor at MIT, and she said that technology has given us the illusion of friendship without any of the hard work of being a friend or or finding friends. Right? It's just this this illusion. And, and a piece of that illusion is what I want to talk about today because we can, we can hear basically what we want to hear and, and we can join um, chat groups and we can subscribe to things and we can watch videos just like this one uh, and basically uh, just tell ourselves and listen to everything we want to hear. Just reaffirm uh, what we want to do or who we want to be and and there's never really any growth in that. When all you hear is just what you want to hear and not what you need to hear, then there's no stretching. There's no growth. There's no there's no looking at things from a different perspective. Uh, so I wanna I wanna give you just a little tool um, that I that I apply that I use in my life, and and I call it. Uh, just the voices. It's something I picked up from John Tyson, uh, and and it came right from the Book of Revelation, right? And in the Book of Revelation, and and listen, this is not super theological. I don't even know if it's if it if it's biblical. It's probably extra biblical, but it's just it's just kind of a an analogy. So don't don't get upset. I'm not I'm not saying this is gospel truth, but in the in the book of Revelation, you see you see this this four headed figure, right? Like this this beast of nature, right? And it has the head of a lion, and the head of an eagle, and the head of the ox, and then the head of a human, like a man, right? And it's just it's this four headed creature, and, and and when I look at that, and when I think about that, I think about the four different voices that every man needs speaking into his life. Like we need a lion speaking into our life, and we need an eagle and an ox and a human speaking into our life. And you say, well, Chris, what does that, what does that mean? 
Well, it, well, it means this: the lion figure speaking into your life is the is the person that is always going to tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. That's the person that's going to. Um, we called it real talk when I was growing up. It's the guy that's going to keep it real, or he's going to keep it one hundred with you, right? He's going to tell you exactly what you need to hear. It's probably going to be hard. Uh, It's definitely going to be uncomfortable, but like you need to hear it. That's the voice of the lion. It's an authority figure. It's someone you look up to, probably someone you admire, someone you trust, and they are going to tell you what you need to hear. They love you enough uh, to tell you what you need to hear. And then you've got the you've got the eagle. The eagle is the voice in your life that is going to inspire and encourage you. The eagle is the is the voice in your life that's going to tell you to dream. Right? And dream big. I've got an eagle in my life when when I share my hopes and my aspirations, the only thing he comes back with is is harp. That's great. Dream bigger. You're not dreaming big enough. Like, like the eagle wants you to soar with him. So it's the voice of inspiration, the voice of affirmation, the voice of encouragement, right? And then you have the ox, and the ox is the pragmatist, right? The ox is pragmatic. The ox is, is, is going gonna, is gonna to speak into your life, but he's also going to be right there with you, walking with you. Uh, so whatever truth, whatever advice, whatever wisdom he's sharing, he's going to work it out side by side with you, right? He's not like a coach. We've all had an athletic coach. A coach will tell you how to do something. A good coach will tell you and show you how to do something, but then the coach is going to sit on the sideline and you have to do it. That's not the ox. Man, the ox is going to tell you. The ox is going to show you. And then the ox is going to grab you by the arm and say, bro, let's go. Let's go. Let's get this, right? It's going to grind with you, going to be with you. And then you have then you have the man or the the human and this man this guy is the man he's he's like your best friend. Like no matter what, he's not going to judge you. Right? He's going to be there for you. He's going to help he's going to help pick you up and speak words of life to you when you fail because ultimately you will fail we 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 all fail at something right and he's he's going to be the one there that that you know is never going to pass judgment he's never going to he's never going to abandon you or or leave you um it's the it's the friend it's the man it's the human it's the it's the encouragement you need so i'm always trying to have these four voices speaking into my life when i'm making a big decision when i'm when i'm looking for discernment and wisdom right i'm not just going to to one of these voices i'm going to all four what happens what happens if you only have lying speaking into your life well you become discouraged because you lack vision right you lack purpose you you lack execution all you're hearing is is things you either don't want to hear, things you need to hear, right? And you can easily become discouraged. What if you only have like the human, the man speaking into your life? Well, then you become soft because you always have somebody patting you on the back or holding your hand and saying, "Don't worry, brother. Like we'll get it, we'll get it right next time." I see this all the time in men's groups, especially dealing with pornography, right? Week after week, guys show up and say, oh, I looked at pornography again, and everybody's like, oh, me too, and oh, we'll try harder next week, don't worry, and you're, you're just stuck in the same rut, and you grow soft and complacent. No, you need, you need a lion speaking into your life, you need an eagle, you need an ox, and you need a human, you need a man, you need a friend speaking into your life. Let me give you an example of this. All right, let's say Let's say you need to lose weight, right? You need to lose weight. The lion is going to look at you, and he's going to speak truth, and he's going to say, hey, bro, um, you're not just big-boned. You're not just husky. You're fat. Let's just call it what it is. You're fat. 
Um, women don't want to sleep with fat men. Uh, if your wife is sleeping with you, she's she's probably doing it because she feels sorry for you. Kids don't want a fat dad. They don't want an overweight dad, right? It, it, it can be embarrassing, and, you know, they want a dad that can pick them up and run with them and play with them, right? You're you're a danger to yourself, like, like your health is in jeopardy, and you're fat, and you need to lose weight. It's just the reality of it. And it's not, it's not a lack of, you know, whatever, right? Quit being the victim, right? You need to take ownership of your health and you need to lose weight. That's what a line would say, man. And, and we need to hear that. We need to hear that. The eagle is going to look at you and say, hey, bro, I get it. You need to lose weight. You remember that documentary of the overweight guy that we watched who, who, who joined the CrossFit gym and then over a year, like, dropped 120 pounds, and now he looks like a Greek god, bro, that's going to be your story. Like, your story is going to be better better than that, man. You're going from zero to hero, and the ego is going to paint a picture and, and a vision for you, and he's going he's gonna to challenge you and, insp- and, and encourage you to live up to that vision. And then I love the ox. The ox is my favorite, right? He's going to come to you and he's going to say, bro, I get it. You need to lose weight. I'm with you. Me and you, 75 hard, we'll start tomorrow. We're doing paleo. What? We're doing cardio. Me and you on the grind. I'll see you at the gym at 6 a.m. And then I'm texting you at 550. You hear yet, bro? 555, where are you at? Day one, let's go. And the ox is just going to grind with you. He's going to be speaking into your life and walking with you as you begin to as you begin to lose weight, I had a friend of mine come to me who, who needed to lose weight. And I said, man, come to the gym with me. He said, dude, I can't, I can't keep up with you, man. Like I can't be where you're at. I said, no, 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 bro. You're not coming to the gym with me to do my exercise. I said, just show up. And every day we'll walk 15 miles. We'll walk 15 minutes together every day. Me and you, we're just going to walk around the gym 15 minutes. And we're going to start week one and do that. And by week seven, we're going to be 20 minutes and then 30 minutes. Like, I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to be your ox. And then you need that, you need that human friend to be there speaking into your life when you fail, because ultimately you're going to miss a day. Ultimately, something's going to happen and you're going to turn back to food as a coping mechanism. And you're going to eat too many wings or have too much pizza And you're going to confess it to this guy, and he's going to say, you know what, man, I get it. I've been there too, man. There's some deep wounds in there, but don't worry. We're going to get through this, and we're going to get through it together. right? But you need all four of those voices if you're going to be successful on your journey because if you just have the lion telling you that you're fat and nobody really likes you, then you're just going to be depressed, and you're going to give up. You're going to quit because there's no inspiration. And if you just have the friend coddling you every time you go back to the pizza well, then guess what? You're going to stay fat, and there's not going to be any change. No, you need the lion. You need the eagle. You need the ox, and you need the man. You need the friend speaking into your life. And and I'm not talking about sitting in the center of a circle and having a kumbaya moment with four people. Like, like I'm not talking about that type of thing, but I'm talking about identifying these four people in your life. Man, who do you go to when you need to hear hard truth? Who do you go to when you need inspiration? Man, who do you go to when you need somebody to be pragmatic and to be with you and to grind with you? Who do you go to when you need need a shoulder to cry on? Like you need those people in your life. Think about another example. Another example a lot of men deal with is, is the father wound in their life right? Maybe they didn't hear, I love you enough. Maybe they didn't hear, I'm proud of you. Maybe their dad was absent. And this, this hurt and this pain and this trauma they experience from their father, they think they can just bury it and ultimately either forget about it or overcome it. And it's not true. Any, any pain and hurt and trauma from our past that we don't, that we don't allow to be transformed, we will ultimately transfer onto someone else 
You know that principle. I talk about that principle a lot. Some of you men watching this, you've got this father wound, this absent father, this abusive father, this neglectful father. You've got this wound, and because it hasn't been transformed, you're allowing it to transfer onto your wife, to transfer onto your kids and your coworkers. Do you see what I'm doing right now? I'm speaking to you as a lion. Like, bro, you need to deal with your father wound because you're hurting others. Your insecurities are hurting others. Your past hurt, you're now transferring onto your children. You got to knock that nonsense off. You need to deal with your dad. Seek forgiveness, forgive him, reconcile whatever it is. You need to deal with it. It's time to stop putting it off. Today we deal with it. I'm talking to you like a lion would talk to you. But then, man, that eagle, that eagle tells you, bro, you've got a lot of hurt, a lot of animosity, a lot of anxiousness, a lot of resentment towards your father. I know, I know he was absent. Could you imagine what life is going to be like when you reconcile with him? Man, can you imagine what what generational change is going to be affected upon your children and their children and their children when you break those generational habits, those generational sins that come through reconciliation, that come through forgiving your father? Do you know how great that is going to be? Man, it is time to let go. It is time to reconcile. It is time to forgive. It is time to make amends with your pops because future generations are going to be altered. I'm talking to you like an eagle. Man, it's going to be amazing. Let's get this thing done. Let's start the journey of healing today because there's hope for tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to come to you like an ox. And you got to find that guy that can say, listen, I get what you're going through, man. I went through the same thing. And these are the steps I took. These are the four steps I did to get right with my dad. And guess what? I'm going to walk each one of them with you. You ready? Step one, me and you starts today. Super pragmatic, super clear. Let's go and we're going to do it together. And then I'm going to come at you like the man, like the friend, and say, hey, bro, listen, I know this is going to be hard. It's going to be hard, man. There's a lot of hurt in there. And maybe you're not ready, and maybe you don't know what to say, but I want you to know I'm with you. And 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 tell me, like, what time? What time are you meeting with your dad? 10 a.m.? The meeting is at 10 a.m. on Tuesday? Man, I promise you I'm going to be praying for you and your father at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. While you're meeting with your dad, man, I'm going to be on my face before God, praying for reconciliation, praying for restoration, praying for hope and healing. I got you. And if it doesn't work out, like if it goes bad, man, you and I, we will sit, we will talk it through, and we will try again, but I'm here for you. Brothers, those are just two examples, two two things in your life that you can get hung up on that you would need a lion and an eagle, and an ox, and a man, and a human speaking into your life. So I want you to take some time today and really think about this, really process this. Man, who are the lions in your life that you can go to for the unadulterated truth, man? They're going to tell you exactly, not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Like, I could name the lions in my life. I got a guy I can call right now, and he will tell me exactly what I need to hear. He's older. He's been around the block a few times. He's made more mistakes than he has successes, but it's his mistakes that have made him wise and successful. And I go to him, and he can tell me exactly what I need to hear. Man, I've got eagles in my life, eagles I can dial up right now. And tell them, man, I'm, I'm doubting myself. I'm experiencing some frustration. I'm, I'm lacking clarity. Man, I need some inspiration and encouragement. Bro, and these, these eagles, don't let them catch a gust, bro. They fly. They fly. These eagles soar high, man. And they, they encourage me and they inspire me. They give me something to run after, something to be like. 
And, dude, I've got some strong oxes in my life. I'm talking about guys that will grab the shovel and grind with you. They will get in the ditch with you. They're just not showing me what to do or telling me what to do, teaching me how to do. No, they're doing with me, shoulder to shoulder. I've got some oxes right now I could call up and say, hey, let's grind, and they're there. Man, and I've got some great friends, some men that, that no matter what, man, they, they love me for me. They're not going to judge me. They're always going to be there for me. They're always going to help pick up the pieces. They are standing in my corner. Do you know how much, you know how much encouragement it is to look over your shoulder and know that there's somebody standing in your corner? Man, it's so encouraging. And you got to have those four voices in your life. Remember, if you get one too much of one particular voice, man, it goes wrong. I meet a lot of men that typically have too many lions in their life, so they're always discouraged and they're always looking over their shoulder thinking somebody's about to stick a knife in their back. Or I meet men that got too many, too many humans, too many friends in their life that only tell them what they, what they want to hear and they're soft they're not resilient. They don't grow. They're just stasis. They're stuck. No, bro. Who's the lion? Who's the eagle? Who's the ox? Who's the, who's the human? Who's the, who's the friend? I would literally, I would take notes. I would write down those names. And the next time you have a decision to make, the next time you're facing a hardship, an obstacle, the next time you need to celebrate with somebody, man, I would use my list. I would call my lion. I would call my eagles. I would call my ox. I would call my friends and get advice, get encouragement, get instruction, get wisdom. You need these four voices speaking into your life. Who are they? And then, of course, the last question is, man, what type of voice are you? And whose life are you speaking into? Man, whose who's lion are you? Whose eagle are you? Whose ox are you? Whose human, whose friend are you? Because as much as you need those voices, you need to be those voices in the life of others. Man, don't just hear what you want to hear. Man, hear what you need to hear so that you can grow and become the man God's called you to be.